the story so far, I am attempting to port Fuzix to the ESP8266. So far, I've got the kernel up and booting. I've got a file system working. I've got binaries that can be loaded and can run code in. And I have been trying to make the system call handler work so you can actually do system calls. So last time, I spent a lot of time on uh, a custom system call handler and exception handler, which is this code. And it nearly works. Uh, it will sometimes run system calls, sometimes it will just hang mysteriously. It doesn't seem to like it when I run kprintf, but it seems to hang before the kprintf actually executes, which is extremely odd. Since then, I've done a bit of reading and I've discovered a few other things. One is that uh, the user exception handler is actually also used for interrupts. So we are going to have to pay attention to the state of the interrupt flag. And also, the uh, there is one additional register we need to save, which is the SAR special register, which is used to control the shifty unit. Now, I've also found in the Arduino source code some prototypes for the uh, the exception handling framework that's already in the ROM. So given that this is more complicated than I thought, and the ROM already contains code for doing everything I want, and it's documented reasonably well in this header file, let's just abandon nearly all the stuff we did last time and start again using the ROM code. Which is annoying, but these things happen. And if it works, then we will have smaller code. So the first thing to do is to simply stub out our old exception handler. Uh, and we configured it in boot.c. We're not using any of this anymore. And so this, okay. So this is now running without the system call handler. What I expect, yeah, is a hang as it hits the system, as it hits the ROMs user exception vector and system call handler. All right, so now let us copy the relevant bits of these prototypes. So the way it works is, uh, where is it? There is a function which sets a exception handler in C. There is a type definition Uh, no, that's not it. This is actually a reference to the system call handler table itself. The ROM actually has two, one for machine code handlers and one for C handlers, and we're using the C one. Uh, this is it. So this type represents a exception handler. Uh, when it's be what you do is you call set exception handler with the vector number, which in this case is going to be one for a system call, and a handler function pointer, and then it will call us back with the the cause, again one, and exception stack frame, which is actually the same as our own exception handler was doing. And this is the machine code handler. And I don't think we need any of the other things, but we will need this structure, which defines stack frame. And I'm actually gonna tweak it slightly because this is using anonymous unions 
Uh, let's fix the indentation. Like so. Now, note that this does not save A1, which is the stack pointer. Uh, these exception handlers don't switch stacks, so they run everything on the same stack where the exception or interrupt happened from. So for us, that will either be the kernel stack or the user stack, depending where the interrupt happens. This means that for a user uh, system call, we are going to have to have our own code to switch to the kernel stack. The other aspect is, which is actually a good thing, is that the large exception frame is being allocated on the user stack. Unless, of course, an interrupt happens in the kernel stack. So, we now want to register our handler. So that's xtos set exception handler, one for a system call. Uh, let me just find, here we go. Here is the actual implementation. So that's the uh, vector number, which is zero to 63. Yes, and here it is shifting it. And you see, this doesn't actually call anything. All it does is write it to uh, the C exception table. Uh, where's that list of addresses? This did describe the, here we go. So this is the machine code vector table and this is the C vector table. So, yes, this is a reference to the machine code table. This is the C table. So we should see it writing uh, yeah. So this is multiplying the vector by four. This is comp computing the address in the C table. Uh, this is loading the old one. Why is it doing that? This is storing the new one. Uh, okay, this, what this is doing is saying if the passed in function pointer is zero, then set it to A10, which is this routine, which will be the default exception handler. So this will allow you to unset a vector by passing in null. Do you want to know what it's doing with A2? Uh, you subtract. E. Yes, this, what this is about, it's returning a value a9 which is 0 otherwise it returns a2 I believe what this is doing is it's uh, checking to see whether it actually set something or not right so if if a vector has not been set then the value read here from the table will be the default handler. So sub movex is comparing it against a 10, which is dbf8, which is the stub routine. Yeah. Um, what this will also do is write the C wrapper to the machine code vector table. So that's an A8, 
we should see a S32 versus A8. Yeah, which is here. This is this is computing the address in the machine code vector table. And then here we are writing the C wrapper to that. The C wrapper is because the machine code vector table is doing, sorry, the C, uh, except, nah, let me start that again. In order to call, in order to hook a C routine to a vector, uh, you need to do additional work than if you're wrapping a machine code routine. So this is the wrapper and what it's doing is it's reading lots of stuff uh, and storing it on the stack frame. So this is all that code that I wrote yesterday except hopefully correct, including uh, the SAR register. So we want to set our syscall handler CV and our syscall handler CB is a one of these. So syscall handler CB, and all we're going to do is ETS put C Z and hang. So that's not working. Undefined reference. Right, I didn't set the addresses of the ROM routines. So set set exception handler. Okay, so with luck, we should see a Z. Yep, we've got a Z. Now, can we do K printf without weird things happening? Actually, I took out the array, so let's just do pc equals x percent lx. And what's the program counter called? EPC. So that's EF EPC. Wrong button. We do need to include rom.h. So let's see what this does. Okay, that worked. Exception one, program counter is a... Is that the right place? Uh, kernel to LD. Yeah, user code. Yep, that's fine. That's all worked. However, well, we could just hook it up to a system call now, but we do want to be on the right stack. Um, so in order to switch stacks, we do need a machine code routine. I am just wondering, we can have the C handler point at our machine code routine that changes stacks and calls the system call handler. Uh, oh yeah, that's the null thing. 
corresponding exe handler table will be set to blah. So I don't know whether it's turned interrupts off. Not sure. I'll have to. Handler, C wrapper handler, which is right here. Um, here it's doing okay. It's setting the interrupt state to one, so that's 32 plus one. 32, as we found out last time, is user mode. Yes, yes. Yeah, there's actually got a lot of these registers, some of which are owned by user code. So here is SAR shift amount. I don't think we've got the loop stuff. I don't think we've got the Boolean stuff. The point of the extensor architecture is uh, a chip manufacturer can opt to have any of these additional extensions added on. Presumably, depending how big their chip's going to be and how much they want to spend. PS, processor state. Uh, 1632, user mode. Why is it setting user mode? Presumably because it's C? It's decided that if it's going through a C vector handler, then it must be user mode. That doesn't really... Well, all the ROM stuff is not going to be used by real operating systems. And in fact, this entire unit is not designed to run real operating systems. It's intended to run machine code, not machine code, intended to run single embedded applications. We're doing something decidedly odd with it here. Okay, well, let's take a look at the machine code handler, which is called uh, this is the unhandled exception. Oh, hey. I haven't spotted that. That might actually be original source code for the ROM. EXEC wrapper handler. Nice open license. This looks familiar-ish. Oh well. So, uh, set handler is the routine that actually sets a exception handler. Yeah. Ha. Uh, it'd be so much nicer if I'd seen this earlier. Anyway, the so what's this then? Is that the default handler? User mode exception handler for the syscall cores. Not 
just used by default. So this is actually, this is exactly the code we want. Okay. Uh, right, this is a default handler. This is... Uh, so this is some stuff for the loop add-on which we don't have. This is the register window stuff that we don't have and it doesn't implement anything else so this is just a demonstration stub. So we do need well we do need that line but we are still going to need to do our stack switching stuff. What I was looking for is the default handler, which is XTOS unhandled exception, this one. Um, I'm looking for information about what the calling convention is, because it might be more useful to switch stacks here other rather than in the C handler um, so this should be the top level handler Yeah. Is it? This is another system call handler. There's a whole bunch of other routines for doing dealing with interrupts. But I thought that the interrupts well the reading I found said that the interrupts went through the vector handler, uh, the exception handler. Okay, you know what? I'm going to do this the don't want that one, I want this one. I think I'm just going to this is returning from an exception. Wow, uh where is it return? restoring the registers. So uh, we're going to want to return the system call arg re well return values in registers so if it's not going to update the registers from the stack frame then we can't use this Okay, I that there's too many configuration options here. Let's take a look at what's actually in the uh, C C wrapper handler is here. So here we store the registers. Here we are calling the underlying exception handler. 
This is doing the return from the exception via this routine, which returns from the exception and restores all the registers. Good. Let's just trust that this is doing the same thing and write a system call handler that switches stacks. And I um, so global because this should actually be. easier to do. Now, we do know that we're only going to get system calls from user code, therefore we don't need to worry about the case when uh, the interrupt or exception is being called from kernel code, which is nice because we can just simplify. We need somewhere to put the old stack pointer. Let's put this here, which is unused in the original stack frame. So that zero is the program counter. No, it's not. Yes, it is. A2 is loaded from offset zero is the program counter. So zero, four, eight, where is SAR loaded from? Uh, don't see it. Right, it happens here. Yep, for at eight. And I do not see any 12, so we're safe to put the stack pointer there. Right. So So A2 is already set up, so all we need to do is save stack pointer to a2 comma 12 done and on exit we need to put it back the way it was so load stack frame from a2 comma 12 right so that's set the stack we now want to switch stacks so that's a simple uh, mov i2 Uh, U data plus U block size like so. And then call call zero unique this call. I think that's all. If this works, which it looks like it worked, well, I would rather like the three hours of my life back that I wasted yesterday writing all this stuff. Oh well. These things happen. It's, it's not actually wasted work. It has taught me how all this stuff actually works. Anyway, we've switched we've switched stacks to the right place. So we go over to main.c. Let's just copy our system call code 
it's actually a little bit different than it is here. So the call number is in EFR2, EFR3, EFR4, uh, 4, 5, 6, in the system call, and on exit, EFR2 equals that, EFR3 equals that. Now I don't know whether the interrupts are on or off, they should be on, but let's see what this does. Does not like it. Uh, A3, A. And computer says panic killed in it. We've got one system call. Why would it panic there? Well, now we did find last time that there is uh, there is actually some built-in debugging, so we can do it's in process.c. Let's turn this on and see if that illuminates anything. And woohoo! Pit one, Cisco thirty-five doing signal and it returns. Cisco, this one does exit. Right, so panic killed in it is a perfectly normal error telling us that in it exited, which is usually not not allowed. All right. Uh well that seems to be working. I I think there should be more twos being printed, but anyway, let's get rid of this. So I think what's happening is the these values are not being restored correctly or else are not being processed correctly by the system call handler, which is in here, which is this routine. Yes, I got the wrong registers. That should be A2, A3. Uh, so A2 is the, no, it's not. A3 is the error. If it is zero, return A2. If it's not zero, store it in, hang on, I didn't put store instruction in. Store it in Erno, S32I, uh, Wait, that was actually what I wrote originally. I just forgot to put the store in. Is that all that's needed? S32I A3, the storing A3, which is the return error value, into that address. Okay, so we now need to build the libraries and applications again. Got a make file in the history somewhere. Which is here, but I need to be in the library directory to make it work. Extra comma. Got to put the zero in. 
Okay. So we now want to rewrite the, f the flash, so we use that burn command, and what happens? Rewrite the flash. And it still doesn't work. So are these return values getting out of the system call properly? Is one question. Another one is that something else could be going wrong. So let's actually take a look at Conditions util init. Let's see. Let's take a look at this and see what it does. Where is it calling signal? Right, main. It calls signal once. Sig int is okay. So this is it calling this? It returns zero zero, but then it doesn't try to call that. So what does the library version of signal do? One of these routines will actually implement. No, signal goes straight to a system call. Sys uh, call signal dot s. Okay. So it right, so it returns from the system call, it does this thing, but then for some reason it's returning to the wrong place. Well, There is no code between here and here. We should be seeing two uh, calls to the signal exception handler. The unless this zero is spurious and not really an exit because we do know that from the documentation syscall zero is used in certain circumstances by the extensor for windowing stuff so because you see these parameters here do not look like parameters for exit okay so let's Uh, let's deal with this by changing our system call ABI. Now we could change the numbers so that we don't use zero anymore we could pass this in another parameter like a7 and then you always use system call 1 meaning fusix kernel system calls let's just change that uh, and 
in our main we want to do in here Um, I f did not update the program counter. So let's pass three. Let's try that. So rebuild. Rebuild all our stuff. Flash it. Interesting. Okay. See if I can catch it. So what's it done? It's always <laughs> Oh dear, dear dear dear. Let's try it again, shall we? Could have just been this, but I was kind of surprised. Ooh, it's doing something. Right, it's trying to open a file and it's failing. Good, we got somewhere. Okay, so actually I will try that again. I just want to look for syscall zeros. So I hit the reset button and try to catch the... Nope, too quick. Okay, let's try, let's try not to drop the board on the floor. So here are the two calls. Signal, we delete a file, we close, stood in, stood there, stood out, we try to open stuff and we sit and spin because init is trying to open presumably dev files which don't exist. Okay, so right, the reason why yeah, the problem was this line, it was missing. The reason for it was it was indeed not hitting the syscall instruction again. However, on exit, it had set A2, which is where the system call number is passed in, to zero, which meant that it instantly hit the syscall instruction again and tried to do system call zero, which is exit. So we don't need that. So we can change this. Okay, now, we now have nearly all the system call stuff working. We should be able to actually like run programs. Uh, we can't fork yet. We can't do switch in and switch out. So we can't swap stuff out. But in it should run. Uh, we do need to put some more things in the file system, which we're going to do here. Um, now, I'm just wondering if there is a Uh, a script that does it for us. I would expect to see a call to Mooknod somewhere. Here's some scripts. Uh, 
I think that might be obsolete. Here's some stuff. Kernel dev. Uh, let's look at this one. Standalone file system source. Build file system. No. Where were those files? UCP script. Yeah, okay. Uh, and we're going to use a here document to inline our script. So hopefully this should work. That looks like that's worked. Okay. So we can now copy the all this script stuff into it. So this is going to create the root file system with its directory structure. Um, We don't actually need all the directories, but we do. Let's have the, the root file system directories. And we also need our device nodes. Um, we don't need any of the HDs except A. You don't need any FDs. We do need these. Here are the binaries we can actually run from the, the util block. Um, and I'm not going to copy them in because there won't be room. So let's just go with that for the time being. I mean, it's not like we can run them or anything. So does it work? Mcnod error 28. It's probably run out of space. Okay, we have a file system image. How big is it? 64K. All right. Um, our directory block should be somewhere. I think this is in it. That's a binary, so it's going to be in it. Uh, here's here. Oh, here's that errors file that we copied. No, we didn't copy an errors file. No, 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 these are strings belonging to init. Are they? Yeah, I'm not quite sure where they come from, but here are the directory nodes for dev. So, okay, that's all there. Let's run it again and see what happens. So it's now writing twice as much flash data to the file system. Hmm. 
not right. Um, very not right. Okay. Um, I need to try and capture some of this. So that's Get it in time. I think I did. Okay, so here we can see system calls as it's doing stuff. It's opening very. It's it's doing the stuff we were expecting before. Um, it's tried to write something. Oh, it's written to stood out. It's written. Right, this is what it's doing wrong. It's writing to stood out. It's writing from here this many bytes, which is quite a lot of bytes. So here it has written the uh, the banner, which is, you know, we're expecting it to do that. But then it just goes and starts spewing garbage to stood out. So there's something wrong with our write system call. Let's take a look. At it, sys call write dot s. Uh, write takes three parameters, which should arrive in a two, a three, and a four. So we put a four into a five, a three into a four, a two into a three, and the system call number is 8, which goes into A2. So the third parameter, ha, is ending up in the wrong place. OK, let's give this one a try. We Again, I don't need to, uh, I don't need to write the file system, so let's save a bit of time. Let's see what this does. And fantastic. So here is our banner, and it has failed to find the init tab, which tells it what uh, files to, uh, what processes to start. Awesome. We are making real progress. So we need an init tab. Uh, let's put it in our script. Let's not delete that. Uh, let's also, we know that system calls now seem to be working, so let's just turn that off. Uh, where is our script? So we did have an update file system scripts in here, didn't we? Okay. So this is going to be in applications uh, library standard where is that etc files Standalone file system source etc files. Does it work? 
it works. Let's see what this does. At some point we're expecting it to try to fork, at which point we then need to start working on the next bit. Interesting. That's because it's put it in dev. Let's put init in dev where the kernel can't find it. Right, excellent. It has tried to fork in order to run the first binary, which is probably going to be a TTY, and there aren't any in here anyway. Uh, so, this is all excellent progress is hit here. Right, now what, what fork does, rather what do fork does, is it sets up to run a new process. Uh, in a single tasking environment like we have here, what it actually does is it swaps the current process out, this is it writes it to a new swap page, this then becomes the parent process. Uh, the new, uh, the currently running process becomes the child. This means that the first, normally the first thing that happens in the child is we'll call exec and replace the current process. So uh, we then end up with the child process running and the parent process uh, descheduled, which is all exactly what we want. Now, I can find the MSP430 version of do fork, which is here. This actually does a certain amount of annoying stuff. Um, the suspended process, the suspended parent is suspended with uh, the kernel stack. So we have the process stack, then uh, in, in swap we have the process data including the stack and the udata block including the kernel stack. When we swap the process back in again, we'll start execution from the, that point in the kernel stack. So do fork will return. Can we do this without needing machine code? That would be kind of nice. I think we... Uh, yes, we do actually need to save our current registers. Uh, there is... A, so I will, could start work on this. However, there is a additional problem, which is currently we have nowhere to swap to. Um, our file system has a single partition on it. Or rather, it doesn't have any partitions. We've got the file system in the entire... Uh, occupying the entire disk. So we kind of want to create a disk image to flash to the thing, which has got a swap partition and the file system. Um, at this point, tell you what, let's actually check stuff in as we've reached a good point to do so. Um, do we have all our files? It looks like it. We do not have this. Do we want it? Uh, 
Uh, no, we're using the capital S version. Okay, that looks like all our files. So we actually probably want to overhaul the entire way we're doing stuff on Flash. I have thought that one thing I can do is import SPIFFS and put uh, a big file on that. That will sort out all our FTL problems. SPIFFS is kind of big and I'd rather not. Uh, our kernel, by the way, is... 40k of code. The other thing we could do is to try and create a multi partition uh, file system, a multi partition disk image. The tricky bit there is while creating a multi partition file system image is easy. Uh, we we can use the fdisk command on a disk, that works fine. So you see we have here a disk in file system image containing 64k and 128 sectors. Uh, also I now realize that I changed the file system size without also changing the configuration here. So trying to access anything in the top half of the disk won't work. Uh, however, uh, the, the UCP command, as far as I know, does not understand partitions. So we would need a way to do that. I'm pretty sure that Linux does have a way to allow you to use partitions in a file system image, but I don't know what it is. So I may actually take a break and go and look this up. Okay, I have figured out how to make this work, which is pretty straightforward, although it has made the file system creation script rather more complex. We call LO setup to bind a loop device to our file. This then causes the kernel to parse it for partitions. I've set up a one megabyte disk image with two partitions. So here we create the file system on loop zero P2, meaning partition two of the file system, etc. Uh, our file is now a megabyte, so I will start that flashing. Uh, that's actually found the wrong serial port. Um, need a TTY USB 0. Okay, that will take a while. I've changed the configuration to boot from HDA2 and the swap is an HDA1. I think we may need to, now I think about it, uh, dev flash. I think we okay. We're already calling scan, so it knows about partitions on the on the device. I think it knows about partitions. 
Uh, so we should be good to go. Oh, I also changed the number of uh, processors down to, from 16 to 4 because each one uses 96k so that was actually beginning to use quite a lot of space even uh, four processors uses 384k of swap space so 16 was using about a megabyte and a half and I'm not going to wait that long for a flash. So we should be able to finish this and then run it again and then we can take a look at our fork. Which is actually pretty simple, I hope. And let's actually just look at the MSP430. Okay, fork. What this does is swap stuff out. Uh, we need to access. We need to uh, we need to save stuff in the stack. We need to save the child PID. Oh yeah, because of course fork returns the child PID, so we need that. Uh, R12? What is this doing? I've also forgotten how MSP430 machine code works. Yeah, well that's done, so... Uh, we don't want to rewrite our flash because it takes forever. So let's try this and see whether it actually does what we want. Uh, we don't want to call update fa update flash anymore. Okay, let's see what happens. Right, so scanning flash, it's found 1018k of flash. That doesn't sound like the right number, honestly. Uh, it's parsed HDA and has found two partitions. It has managed to mount the root file system at partition two. That's actually the wrong number is printed there. Uh, but it has successfully mounted the file system and has failed to fork. So we know that that's all working. So what this is doing is it's saving the, the registers that C expects to have saved onto the stack. Uh, this, I believe, in the MSP430 is the return parameter, yep. So it's saving this here so that when, uh, when we restore ourselves after things get switched in, we're actually returning the right value. Uh, we then swap out the current process. Uh, that has set up the parent okay well we call new proc which creates a new process using the current code We don't care about the current, about the state that we saved, so 
and then we just return essentially all right well I am on entry R12 is the process pointer so that's actually going to be in A2 we will need this value so we're going to have to put it into uh, our kernel defs file, which we cleaned out yesterday because it was all wrong. So let's look at the source of truth ppid offset offset. tab okay so this is going to be uh, p tab zero status flags tty pid uid p pointer Alarm, exit val, wait page, page two. We're not using new data. Priority, PSIG, wait no, timeout, name. Yikes, there's lots of this. You know what? I'm not going to set them all. I'm just going to set the one we want. PID offset is zero, one, Two, three. That can't be three. Three's not aligned. Zero, one, two. Okay, it, it, it will have inserted padding, so it's actually going to be at four. Hmm, this could be reordered. Uh, what else do we need? We need the the stack pointer in the U data block. So that's define U data USP is. So zero, four, six, eight. How big is a bool? I think a bool is an int on this. Twelve. Th oh dear, it's more padding. So thirteen. A uh, uadder is an int, so that's going to be sixteen. Twenty. 24, 28. Um, we need to check these things. If new data USP is not equal to offset of
No, we can't do this here uh, because we don't have the kernel configured. We're going to have to do it in here. Checking this stuff at runtime is bad, but um, not as bad as it could be, as the compiler will optimize all these conditions away if they're correct. Uh, C++ has a static assert statement which is really useful for doing that sort of thing because that's guaranteed to not produce um, any code and it'll produce compile time errors. So I want CPU and X106, CPU.8, no we don't, I want rules. So I want to make it find this header file, so that needs to be as I used to in root dear. Okay. Now let's just put our do fork back again. And let's see if that produces anything useful. Hopefully nothing. Okay, that's wrong. will tell us what the right value should be. Twenty-four. Yeah, I think that bool wasn't as big as it was uh, as I thought it was. Um. That will be a dependency issue uh, we want all our objects also depend on this. Okay, so that rebuilt everything. Good. So we now uh, we now know that that constant is set to the right value. So let me just check that it's generating no code uh, by looking at it's calling I'd be looking for main, so here, and our entire conditional has vanished. That's good. Okay, let's do the same thing for the other one. So p tab p pid offset is not equal to the offset of struct p tab p pid and we need an extra parenthesis there 
and we should actually now be able to write some code. Okay, that's worked. So let's get rid of our string again. And what we need to do is push the registers onto the stack in the order in which a switch uh, switch out, switch in is going to save them. Switch in and switch out are the routines that switch from one process to another. Uh, do fork is subtly different because it switches from the current process to the current process while saving a state that looks like switch out onto the stack. The state we can tell is going to be these values. So this is uh, this is going to be the non uh, the caller saved so the call the callee saved registers. So the windowed API uh. right here we go so this is a12 to a15 so we're going to save a12 onto something, A13, A14, A15. We also need to save SAR, so read special register, SAR A2, A. That's going to be onto something. We need to save the current stack pointer. Why do we need to save the current stack? Uh, we save the stack pointer into the UData block. So this is going to be UData plus UData USP. S32 ISP goes into there. Um, actually, we're referring to UData again. So let's put UData in A2 and we can do this. So, 1 times 4, 1 times 4. 2 times 4, 3 times 4, 4 times 4, therefore we need that many bytes of stack frame. Do we need to save the status register? We're always going from system call to system call because we're not doing any preemption, so no. Okay. does not mention SAR as part of the ABI. Hmm. Save the copy, save the register. Do the stack. In the same order that switch in will do a uh, switch 
out, we'll do it. So switch in, we'll restore it correctly. Uh, A2 is the P tab of the current process. So we can't put this in A2, let's just use A3 for all this. Okay, save the current process to disk. So this is pushing the current process onto the stack. Why? What does switch in do? Uh, odd. So somewhere here there should be code that restores the... Uh, oh, here we go. This is the code that actually restores the process. So we can see it loads stack pointer, reset the run count, this is for preemption, which we don't think we care about. Uh, status register and restore all the registers. So it's doing this in reverse. So, ah, I hadn't scrolled down far enough. This is saving the this is saving the ptab pointer because we're about to call swap out, which can corrupt it. Yeah, because in the MSP430, R12 is a call a uh, saved register. So we actually want to save A2 into a slot here. Uh, we want to pass in right this is actually the this is actually a global variable it's not an offset yeah so that actually wants to be offset which means we need this to be offset and we want this to be offset. Um, so what we need to do here is we want to load the process, the ptab pointer from user data. Now user data is an A3, so we can just do L32i U data U P tab offset. Okay. Uh, call swap out and then load uh, A2 back again off the, the stack frame. So A2 is now pointing at the the current process is P tab. Right, this we haven't done yet. Uh, 
Uh, hang on, hang on. I'm doing this wrong. Right, this is saving the caller save registers. Because we know that swap out is going to save registers A12 up. This is needing to save the registers that aren't normally saved. Oh dear. Okay. So this is going to want to save A0. A1 is the stack pointer, so we're not saving that. A2. A3. A4, A5, A6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, um, Do we need to save SAR? Um, I'm not sure we do. I am slightly surprised not to see much in the way of references here to where the SAR needs saving. I think that you generally assume that SAR is not preserved across a call. So it doesn't really matter what it's going to be on exit. Do I actually have this right? On return from our system call, all the user registers will be returned to what they were before, except for our two return registers. So we only care about calling stuff from the kernel. And this is a normal function, so it corresponds to the normal ABI. Let's take a look at another one. Let's take a look at the 68 uh, Tari ST tricks.s. Uh, that's a generic one. So Platforms which shall cause the current process save A0, A2 to A4, A6, and D2 to D7. I don't think we need to save any registers. Um, or So let's say I am a kernel function. I have some state in registers. I've got some state in the uh, the low registers, which are 
call uh saved and some state in the high registers which are call e saved i call a function i expect the call e saved registers to have their values preserved so i call do fork do fork does its stuff suspends the process because i'm the parent the parent gets rescheduled and re this returns via the switch in process i expect to see the high registers with the values as they were so I was right the first time I need to save the call E registers. And okay. So the old PID is needs to go into the as uh, so the child's PID need to be returned from the parent as the return value. So do fork needs to let me just see how do fork is actually So yeah. So the parent has to return uh, the child process. But when we switch back in. then where does the return value come from well on the MSP 430 it's in R12 Let's look at another platform. Uh, what have we got? Uh, let's try Let's try a Z80 platform. Okay, so this is simpler. Switch in, here we go. Switch in is doing the work. So here is do fork. Prepare the return value in the parent process. So HL is actually is the PID of the the uh, the child. That's going into HL. When we get switched back in, 
these parameters get restored so switch in what's the switch in never returns the process gets replaced with the one that gets loaded from swap that includes all of its stack frames So switch in only ever happens from switch out. which will it'll preserve the uh, it'll preserve the callee saved registers but won't preserve the caller saved registers because it's just going to return from this void function so platform switch out gets called that switches out the process and the process will later get switched back in again this will return so the only case when a return value is coming out of switch out is when we've set up a new parent process so we need to load that PID which is this and put it onto the Um, and put it onto the stack frame so that switch in can place it in R2. So switch out will store a zero. Well, it doesn't matter what switch out stores here because it'll be garbage on the way back in. I hope that is right. So A2 is the P tab of the current process. So we want to load this value and we're going to store it at slot 5 times 4 so this is going to be 6 and 6 so We wish to call new proc to find a new child uh, to create a new child process. I will admit this does all seem kind of backwards. The this the child pid uh d 
Does new proc assign the PID or has it been figured out ahead of time? This looks like it's well it's preserving R12 so which is the first parameter so that that must be in order to put it into new proc. So let's assume that Let's presume that was the reason. So we were going to want to return zero. So let's put i into zero. We need to save the value. We need to save i into. We need to save zero into run ticks. Uh, we need to restore our stack frame and return. Okay, let's find out what new proc does. Not much, apparently. Uh, underscore new proc. Is it a thing I need to define myself? Is it in a no? Okay, I'm a bit confused. Does it build? No, it doesn't. I want to change this to that. Uh, invalid symbolic operand. Um. We didn't add that to our kernel file. So it is at USP. Stores the stack pointer when the process is switched. So that will be zero, four, six, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty, twenty four, twenty eight. Also, I'm looking for the p-tab field, not the sp field. Which is there. Oh, it's at the top. Good. Well, that's going to be a zero. Uh, u data u p-tab offset. Ah, oh, that's in fact just a typo. It's embarrassing. All right. 
statement with no effect. I think I forgot a yeah. More. Right, undefined reference to new proc. Right, I reckon that new proc has, has gone. And the reason why I can't find it is that it's no longer in the source code. So some it will something else will be doing it instead. It will be bit rot. Let's take a look at this. Do fork. Make proc. And it appears to be pushing two values. Which is the okay. proc fixes up the table for a child of a fork, but also for init. It sets it to running, so it must be called immediately. We need to pass in. I think this is a process pointer. Yes, it is, and also the u data. So, this is so a two is already the the process pointer, the, the p tab pointer from here. So we need a a three to be the u data. Well, that's easily done. This is pushing stuff for later. I don't think we care about any of that. Let's see what happens. Hopefully a failure due to swap out. Yay, we have created a child process. Okay, well, that is a ton of progress. Uh, the next bit is the swapper, which is pretty simple. I mean, it's just this. We're going to copy some of this code. Uh, this is the original swap code, which is very straightforward. It writes the, to swap something out, it writes the uData block, and then it writes the data. But we're going to have to change it to write both data and code. Uh, but I'm going to call it for now because I'm running out of time. So that's really good. I'm pleased to see that. Uh, notice that we had, don't have any interrupt handlers yet. We don't have a timer or anything. Uh, the system will actually run reasonably well without one. Uh, yeah. Okay. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know what you think in the comments.